or Cholo says he's catching less fish than he used to. Water levels in the Parana River are at their lowest since 1944 and have been declining for two years. Sure, the water keeps going down. The region is in a critical state. What we need is rain, for the rain to fill the creeks and ditches because it's all turning to swamp. The Paraná runs south for nearly 5,000 kilometers from the center of Brazil and empties into the Atlantic Ocean between Argentina and Uruguay. It provides energy and drinking water and is a major transport route. It's life for millions of people. Only now, it's dying. So many problems. They're not using the Paraná properly. It's been badly mistreated and now we're living with the consequences. The residents of San Pedro are watching developments at the COP26 summit in Glasgow, but have little time for the so-called experts. They say they know what needs doing, but are frustrated that money and politics seem to talk louder than common sense. We've got to start looking at what we're doing wrong before we can put it right. Governments need to apply laws regarding the use of land, the way we treat nature, always looking to defend the environment. Rainfall has diminished. The locals blame hydroelectric projects built upstream and ill-planned bridges, but mostly massive deforestation to make way for cattle and soil production. Fast-flowing streams become stagnant puddles or dry up altogether, unsettling the delicate ecosystem. The waters of the Paraná used to reach here. Now they lie on the other side of those trees behind me, with the residents asking not just when, but if what they once knew as normality will ever return. Now the very industries blamed for the crisis are also suffering. These vessels transporting agricultural produce from Paraguay and Argentina must load less cargo or risk running aground. More journeys mean higher costs and increased pollution. We'll fight to get rid of the big landowners because they want this region to plant soya and maize. We'll try to warn people so they don't ruin this region. If not, we're dead. We'll have nothing. These are river people watching their way of life under threat, shouting to be heard, but in the meantime, surviving whichever way they can and praying for rain. Well, Daniel Schweimer joins us now live from Argentina. Daniel, from your report, we can see the, the, the effects this is having on the people who are living on or near the river. But just, just why is the situation as bad as it is? Why are the water levels going down so much? Well, there are many of the reasons I mentioned in the report, but here I'm about 120 kilometers south of San Pedro, where we did that report. Uh, we're in the, where the tributaries of the Paraná flow into the, or join up with the river Uruguay, become the Rio de la Plata, or the river plate, and flow into the, uh, into the South Atlantic, close to Buenos Aires. And here they're noticing the impact as well. We've just been talking to a guy who works on the river, uh, who showed us his app. They have an app which they look at every day, several times a day, showing them the water levels. And he said uh, today, even though it's been raining a fair bit in the last few days, it's at 30 to 40 percent lower than it should be. Uh, so that's affecting people here, uh, where they work in industry, they work in uh, tourism, a, a big industry here, um, and people live out here in the, uh, the Paraná or Tigre Delta. So it's affecting people right along the path of the river, which is about or nearly 5,000 kilometres long. Uh, and they blame many things. Part of it is uh, natural fluctuations uh, which happen uh, with uh, changes in climate or changes in weather uh, but many of the results or the reasons are man-made I mean people here have no doubt about that and much of it is to do with the massive deforestation we've seen in southern Brazil Paraguay uh, and northern Argentina uh, and then we will often see that the timber that is uh, cut there is then brought down the river Paraná uh, to be exported uh, from ports like Rosario uh, and Buenos Osiris. So the very people who are causing the deforestation are also suffering the consequences of the lowering levels of the river because they can't load as much cargo as they normally would on their barges because they risk running, running aground. So there's almost a vicious circle here of, uh, of, of problems uh, which people are living along the river and now having to face and deal with.
OK, Daniel Schweimler, they're live for us in northern Argentina. Daniel, thank you. Uh, let's head back to Glasgow. Joining us from there is Tim Wainwright, uh, the Chief Executive UK for Water Aid. And it's good to have you with us on the news hour. When we think of global warming, it's usually temperatures getting hotter and people suffering that way. But it, it, it is also affecting water without which none of us can can survive uh, how are you getting your message across to the delegates and so on at cop about the challenges climate change is posing to water um well thank you very much and it's great to be um go to hearing this coverage and and focusing on water because actually as your report just now illustrated climate change is here now and affecting many many of the poorest countries in the world who did the least to cause the uh, the climate change and uh, the way in which climate change affects people is actually principally through water either far too much or not enough. Um, so you're getting either floods or you're getting droughts. You're getting weather patterns changing to extremes so that where there were 10 storms before, there's one with the same amount of water falling. Um, and this is leading to extreme uh, water stress for billions of people in the world already. And we know that even if um, climate change is limited to 1.5 degrees. We hope we hope that happens. Um, there will be very significant um, impacts on the poorest uh, people all around the world, where water aid is wor working uh, and seeing it, this happening. And, and, and can anything be done to, to, to change this situation, or are we here now and we just have to live with these devastating storms? No, no, no. There are plenty of solutions possible. But at the moment, the amount of investment in water is tiny in adapting to water change in the world. Um, most climate finance is going into other things. The, the amount of public investment in, in, in water is tiny. The amount of private investment in water in the poorest countries in the world is even smaller. So it's really important, and this is what this is the key message that we are arguing for here in Glasgow, is that we uh, create the conditions for um, uh, significant investments to be made to secure water from its source to its tap. Your report um, in South America, the same story can be told across Africa, across Asia, um, where you need to secure the source of water, you need to preserve the ecosystem, and you need to supply it in, in a reliable way, a sustainable way across the whole year, not just part of the year and have the taps running dry. You need quality water uh, for people to live. You need to supply water to the, um, the agriculture sector. You need to supply water to the um, to industry. And you need these to be regulated properly so that the, the water is the water use is moderated within the limits that are um, that are available. And, okay. and this is possible. It is. Well, um, it, I'm, I'm glad so to hear it's possible. Are, are, are are you reassured by any of the promises that are being made by the leaders at COP26? I, I think some good things are being done here, and I think there is more to do. And I think particularly in this area, um, Mark Carney made some great statements yesterday about the um, uh, public finance triggering much larger amounts of private finance to tackle the, the warming question and, and, and transitioning to a low carbon economy. That's great. But what we want to see is something very similar in the adaptation space and particularly focusing on water adaptation, Do you which worry is that, the, uh, the most critical issue. I'm sorry to cut you off. Do you worry sorry. that water management's not receiving the attention that it, that, that it needs at this sort of conference? Because we are yes. focusing very much on coal. No. Um, it, and that's important, and that's uh, that that is a problem that needs to be solved. We need to slow down the warming of the world, and we need to do something about the changes that have happened and are going to happen. However much we manage to slow down the, the warming, they they're, they're here with us, and they're hitting countries in sub-Saharan Africa and in South Asia. You know, water aid is working in these countries and we are seeing the effects now. In fact, we've been seeing them for the last 10 years and they're getting more and more extreme. OK, Tim Wainwright, I am afraid we're out of time, but great to have you on the news. Thank you very much indeed for joining us from Glasgow. Thank you, Thank you very much.